Well, a very big welcome, everyone. Welcome to our coaching cafe for this Friday. Whether you are watching us live or you're listening on your favorite streaming service, my name is Natalie Ashdown from Open Door Coaching. And our topic today is how do you remain in your career sweet spot as the world of work changes and evolves? And I'm very, very pleased to welcome back guest presenter Veronica Millen. Hello, Veronica. Hi, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me again. It's great to have you. We love having you back as a guest presenter and uh, we're looking forward to digging into this uh, topic with you. Just before we begin, as always, let us acknowledge the, do the acknowledgement of country and acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodians on the lands on which we're meeting today, their continuing connection to the land, waters and communities of Australia and international land, waters and communities. We pay our respects to them, to their elders, past, present, and emerging and anyone who might be on the line from an international indigenous community as well because we know with the podcast this goes out all around the world and it's fantastic to see everyone dialing in from all around the world live um, for, our, for our coaching cafe today as well so our agenda as i mentioned we want to talk about how do you remain in your sweet spot as the world of work changes and evolves now of course if you're new to the coaching cafe welcome we are all about creating a community sharing learned experiences, uh, having thought-provoking conversations. That's why we've brought back Veronica. Uh, and you can interact with us in the chat box. If you're listening to this uh, on the podcast, feel free to write comments in the chat as well. Uh, and at the end of the session, your ICF CCEUs are available. So as I mentioned, it's a pleasure to welcome you, Veronica, to the line. For those of you that haven't met Veronica, she is a senior HR professional and executive coach an author of this amazing book, which I love, and you can see it's all tabbed up called Career Agility, which she released last year. Um, and Veronica is an Open Door alumni as well. So it's a pleasure to welcome you to the line. Thank you so much, Natalie. Lovely to be here. So I'm going to actually uh, put down the, uh, stop the screening so that we can just see. But if anyone is interested uh, in Veronica's book, please go to veronicamillan.com and go to the shop and you can pick it up there. Also available on amazon.com.au and you can connect with Veronica on LinkedIn, which is Veronica Millen, M-I-L-L-E-N. All right, that's the uh, that's the uh, advertisement, so the quick introduction. <laughs> Feel free everyone to interact with us in the chat box as we're having this conversation because we're very keen to, to, uh, to hear your thoughts as well. So this idea, Veronica, about um, the world is changing, uh, our workplace is evolving. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, the, the trends around hybrid, which is here to stay. I suppose I want to kick up our conversation today by talking about, well, what is the career spot? How would you define that? Yeah, I think that's um, a really good point and I've been following along because I'm really interested in those trends and uh, that are happening in the world of work and I was reading a McKinsey's article this morning saying, you know, it's a once in a generation or lifetime opportunity to change the way we work because, you know, we had the industrial revolution and things like that and now... Um, because of COVID, there's another opportunity to change the world of work and, and hybrid working and so on. And I think, as you say, that's that's here to stay. All the research is showing that. So the career sweet spot for me is vitally important at this time because of those trends. So, so what is it? Back to your question. For me, it's the intersection of our skills or our capability to build a skill in a certain area, our interests, what do we actually enjoy, and our needs, things like values, what do we value? And I think it's critically important because the work that Martin Seligman did, in, you know, in his over three-year project with 55 distinguished social scientists into via strengths, the values in action, really identified that workers who use their strengths have a much more positive experience at work. So that's really important to me, that intersection between the skills and the interests is our strengths. And then what I've added to that is the needs, things like values and so on, are our needs being met? And I think that's why it's so important at the moment, because our needs are changing and working is changing. And to, to for people to be in their career sweet spot, that's where they enjoy their work, they're most satisfied, they're most engaged, they do their most productive work. So for people to go through a coaching session with, with a career coach and really understand the skills, the interests and the needs, that's where they can enjoy their work. And we spend over a third of our life at work, over 90,000 mm. hours. 
So, you know, I, that's my why. That's, you know, Simon Sinek says start with why. That's my why is to support people to enjoy their work. So for people to understand what their career sweet spot is and then how they can stay in it as the world of work changes, I think is vitally important. But that's how I define it, the skills, the interests and the needs. And then overarching all of that, of course, is the job market. Yes, yes. And you've got, um, obviously, in um, in career agility, you've got a diagram of that. And it mm -hmm. is those three circles, the Venn mm -hmm. diagram and finding out that sweet spot in the middle. So mm -hmm. it's it's great to be able to reflect on the, the, the diagram as well. And I was I was thinking about as you were as you were talking about why it's important this career spot and as you mentioned the work of Simon Sinek and and it is because we want to get out of bed and mm. and enjoy our careers as you say we spend most of our time a lot of our time actually at work so mm. that idea about what gets you out of bed what do you enjoy the most how can you add value contribute to the world of work mm. uh, I think is becoming well it's always been important but Veronica, do you think it's even more important nowadays that we understand that? 100%. I mean, all the research is showing that people are generally wanting to have a sense of purpose and a sense mm. of connection and in, to, do, to enjoy their work. It's not just about go. For most people, it's not just about doing the hours, getting the money. The, you know, there's a lot more that work provides that's than financial. It's the sense of belonging, the sense of achievement, all of those things. Um, so absolutely, I think even more so, it's it's in these times where we're working from home and we may not be having those connections face-to-face, -face, I think understanding uh, where we are energised and, and where we add value is, is increasingly important. Yes, and there's a lot of research we've been sharing with the alumni and through our blogs uh, and the like around how the idea around connection uh, in the hybrid world, the idea around connection, uh, communication, uh, there's a lot, there is disruption in terms of what we're using meetings for and how effectively we're using those meetings. So being aware of those things that you talk about, uh, we're hoping is actually some of the antidote to those issues as well. I agree, I agree. Are there other reasons why you think that the career sweet spot um, is a great conversation to be having at the moment as the world of work evolves and changes? 100% and I can see Paul has um, written a comment there so we'll come back to that one in a minute. <laughs> Yeah. Look, really interestingly, there's been a study um, conducted and over three quarters of C-suite executives that were um, surveyed by McKinsey's um, said they expect employees back three days a week plus in the office. Mm -hmm. They also um, spoke to over 5,000 employees and over half of them wanted to work from home three days plus. <laughs> so yes, 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 I yeah. think there's a real disconnect there in what people need or want from work. So I love this quote from McKinsey's that said, employers are ready to get back um, to significant in-person presence and employees aren't. And they said the disconnect is deeper than most employers believe and a spike in attrition and disengagement may be imminent. So absolutely, I think it's more critical than ever because I think there's a, generally speaking, a very big disconnect. Employers are saying, come back into the office, let's build a culture and connection and engagement. And employees are saying, I love this flexibility. I'll work from home. Thank you very much. And yeah. so th there can be a real disconnect between the two. Um, and I think as, as um, that quote that I just read um, says, there's going to be issues in terms of attrition, disengagement. You know, we hear about quite quitting, all of those things. Absolutely, Paula, before COVID, it, you know, it wasn't an issue. And now with the trend is um, everyone worked from home and then employers want us back and employees don't want to go back. And so it's vitally important because there's such a disconnect that can lead to issues for people's enjoyment and not being in their career sweet spot. Yes, and your research there from McKinsey also backed up by the research, uh, the recent research from Gallup as well, mm -hmm. that talked about a lot of the advantages of actually the hybrid work and the employees are actually finding that. Um, and they actually suggested that the advantages of hybrid actually outweighed uh, the, the negatives. Um, mm -hmm. But as you say, the opposite is true for um, employers. And the, the other thing that, that was being cautioned uh, also is that culture is not just bring everyone back mm -hmm. so you don't just bring everybody back mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you have this great workplace culture that workplace culture needs to be rebuilt um, mm. in my opinion 
Hundred percent. I mean, it's it's how the leader, you know, how the leader set that environment, that psychological safety, all of those things, so that yes, it's not just come back to work and we'll have a positive culture. We still need to leaders cast that big shadow. You know, I love that um, framework of the leadership shadow, and you know, it is around the behaviours, and um, you know, culture is what we do every day. So it's not just bring them back, but then having those behaviors every day that's that foster psychological safety and engagement and motivation. So I think it is around leaders having those skills, those almost leader as coach skills, so they can have conversations and understand with their employees what does engage you? What what is a positive culture for you? What encourages you to come back to the office? What are you looking for in your career kinds of questions to build a, a a place where people want to be. Yes, and as we always say, if you're listening to the recording or whether it's live or via your favourite streaming service, now's a good time, <laughs> yes, to pause the recording and write down those <laughs> questions as Paula's yes. just said, yeah. Uh, and Paula also, um, um, Open Doors HR uh, resident specialist, says that lots of people are re-evaluating based on their sweet spot. Um, those they those people might not have considered in the past actually their needs or what their career sweet spot was. They just kept going to work um, and but now they're really focusing on what they they want and who they should be working for as well so thanks um, for that insight as well so um Veronica I want to dig deep a bit dig a little bit deeper if you don't mind and I, I want to turn to that need circle um, more mm -hmm. specifically um, and I'm wondering would you care to comment or share with us uh uh, your your uh, diagram has just a circle on needs, but I see that there's business and organisational needs that we've been talking about, and also the needs of the individuals. So how do the how does that come together? Or do you want to comment on? Sorry, this is the most long winded question in the world, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm interested in the in the organisational needs and the needs of the individual and how they come together to create a career to create a career sweet spot. Does that question make any sense at all? To absolutely, you? absolutely. No, that's, that's, and I think that's a really interesting point because, um, you know, as coaches, sometimes we can have a number of hats. And so, you know, we're supporting the employee, but we're also supporting the leader or the organisation. And, you know, in the book, I've really focused on individuals and their needs. But I love that you're also bringing in the organisational needs, because that's realistic and commercial, we have to balance the needs of the organisation and the individual. So I love that um, extra lens that you've brought there. And it makes me think, um, you know, you're saying commenting on the needs. I studied um, online uh, um, an introduction to the science of well-being uh, with Professor uh, Laurie Santos. She's amazing, and one of the things that I really got out of that was this term called miswanting. And um, what they were saying is, the psychologists have found that sometimes we have this idea of miswanting. So, to give an example, to make it real. You know, if I have some free time and I, they say, what would you want? What would you need? What would make you happy? I might think, oh, I want to lie on the couch. I want to eat some chocolate. I want to scroll Instagram. That's what I want. That's what I need. That will make me happy. But actually, you know, the science shows that perhaps going for a walk and getting some fresh air and some steps and, you know, talking with a friend and connecting would actually be what I need and, and would make me happy. So that's the concept of miswanting. And I think that there could be an element of miswanting here when we look at the organisational needs and the employee needs, because I think sometimes myself included as, a, as an employee, um, I think, oh, I want to work from home. That, that's what I want. That's my need. And yet humans are wired for connection. And so, you know, we do need some of that connection. So I wonder, you know, I, I do a lot of my work from home and I really enjoy that. I can pick my daughter up from school and all of the things. And yet I do miss sometimes the connection. Yes, I connect with people virtually like this, but I do miss actually seeing people in, in person. And we all have varying degrees of needs, you know, on a spectrum of, you know, how much energy we get from others and so on. But I think that's where perhaps the um, organisational needs, as you pointed out, and the individual needs maybe could be better aligned um, mm. when we look at the two, because I think there could be an element of miswanting. I think on both sides, I think a, a corporation mm. might be miswanting people to come back more and employees might be miswanting to come back a little bit and there's something in the middle there. But, you know, I haven't seen many organisations, I coach people globally, 
and because of the, the fact that we can um, connect virtually, which is fantastic. I haven't seen many organisations yet. And I'd love to hear in the chat if anyone has seen anything they can share. Nail the hybrid working quite yet. Um, mm. And nail that intersection between organisation and needs and employee needs. Most people I speak to, whether they're individual contributors or leaders, there's a bit of a rub there and it's a challenge to find that sweet spot. Um, and I think it, it's a work in progress. And I think it's a really exciting opportunity for any organisation who can do a great job of that. Because as you said, it's not just saying come back in and the culture will be amazing. There's work that needs to be done, as always, as leaders to set the tone, to set the culture, to have those conversations with employees, understand their wants and needs, perhaps flex to those, but balance them with the commercial realities. So it's not easy, um, but I think you're right. It's not just looking at the employee's needs. It's also looking at the company's needs, but it's also considering mm. is there any miswanting on both, on either side or both sides. I, I love that you've given us a new term. I haven't heard of <laughs> miswanting before, so thank you. And it's, oh, it's really? really making my head spin now because, because I'm thinking about... Um, employers want their people to be back in the back in the office and uh, staff want to work from home but but I'm thinking that uh, that's a really simple kind of way of thinking about it there's much better coaching questions we could be asking which mm -hmm. is what you're really I think alluding to Veronica around what's most important so mm -hmm. what why and you know that we kind of avoid why questions but in this context it's like why is it important mm -hmm. that people are coming into the office mm -hmm. what are we actually trying to achieve by having people come into the office that we don't have if yes. they're at home so it's it's actually for me trying to ask better quality questions so that so I know that that's what you want but as you say it's miswanting Mm. Uh, you want to work from home, but do you really want to work from home all of that time? Uh, mm. But it's not just a yes or no question no. as well. There's so many better quality questions I think we can ask. And I think that's that's exactly right. I think it's the uh, staying curious and non-judgmental and asking those open questions. So it could be, what are you hoping to achieve? What, mm. what are, you know, what? Because the companies that I do see that are doing a good job of of trying to navigate this change, this demographic, you know, trend and, um, uh, you know, find an intersection between employee sweet spot and the company sweet spot are looking mm. at what are we hoping to achieve and therefore mm. how would we spend the time? So some yeah. companies, as others may know, it's what, what's the purpose here? Is it connection? Because if it's connection, let's, but if it's um, focus work, then let's do that where you focus best and for some people that might be in an office and for some people that might be from home or whatever the cafe or whatever the case may be so I think it is those those really strong questions of what are we trying hoping to achieve and what is the best way of achieving that mm. um, so yeah I think it, it's about asking those questions um, to really say like the grow model what is the goal here what yeah. is the reality? Um, what 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 are, what are what are the options, and and what is the way forward? Yeah, yeah love absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of com um, comments coming through on the chat now too. Cool. Um, there, Veronica, around you, we've we sparked the interest here. <laughs> so, um, um, Paula says perhaps culture is where miswanting is addressed, and the true needs of organisations and employers are found. And mm. Marissa, yes, um, in our deployment program, you've got there the Cartesian questions mm. to gain clarity around the office mm. and the hybrid. So maybe we need to do a whole uh, That's another a really webinar good just on. Um, putting this this topic through the Cartesian yes. coordinate questions thank I love you that. Um, Marissa I love that. yeah that would be a great yeah. tool um <laughs> that would be a great tool to work yeah. through in more depth you know as you yeah. say what questions could we ask to really dig deeper and say what mm. are we trying to achieve here and what's the best way to achieve that I, I love that Marissa that's a great idea yeah, and, and Sean's picked up here too. Is it connection that people want or mm -hmm. reconnection? Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference? Do we want mm -hmm. what we had previously or some mm -hmm. other version of connection, whatever that might be? And so thank you for um, bringing that up as well. And the other thing that keeps coming up for me is the higher purpose. Mm -hmm. So keep coming back to uh, for what purpose? What what do we mm -hmm. want this for? Um, and 
and for what reason do we want um, the connection and then how do we actually want to bring that forward? So there's so many great quest coaching questions we can ask here. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about um, also questions about, okay, so if, if, a, if a manager wants visibility mm -hmm. um, and the manager wants uh, to be sure that people are performing and working, mm -hmm. Then, sorry, I'm getting a little bit um, fired up here. But then the good, uh, the good yeah, the, the good coaching questions about, well, how can we have visibility? How can we enable performance? How can we be confident that everyone is actually, you know, performing and bringing their best to the work? So asking really good coaching questions around that, trying to find that higher purpose, I think there's uh, there's some answers in that as well. 100% I think it's you know what is the underlying issue here is it an issue of trust because yes if you, mm. if you think that you need to see someone to see them performing you know and if it's around hours rather than output and, and as you say you know presenteeism can 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 be an issue you know we, we don't need to see people in the office to see the, their work but so I think mm. that's really right it's digging down to what is the underlying issue here what do you need to see um, for you to feel that there's yeah productivity um and I love Sean's point about yeah is it connection or reconnection because I think it's not the same as before you know people aren't going mm. into the office every day like before so is it yeah reconnecting is it different um to what it was before and um I just saw a note pop up that it left um my screen but Paula made a good point there around measuring productivity as well yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, it's a really interesting question, isn't it? We could explore that even further around connection or reconnection. And the mm -hmm. question that comes up for me as well is what are we reconnecting or mm -hmm. what are we connecting? Are we connecting mm -hmm. people? Are we connecting work? Are we connecting mm -hmm. uh, goals, aspirations? Are we connecting I needs? It, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of great coaching questions. Why. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important to think about what is the purpose, what are we trying to achieve, and how is that best achieved. So if it's mm. connecting ideas, it might be like this virtually is fine. If it's connecting, you know, people and um, culture, then it might be face to face. So I think that's a, a really good point. So Veronica, I, I know we're right on time now, and we know that there's a lot of coaches on the line. But for managers out there who are listening, yes, uh, and they don't really have experience in career conversations, of course, I'm going to say go read uh, <laughs> Career Agility. <laughs> I, I love this book a lot. Uh, of course, I'm going to say um, you know go read Career Agility and have a good 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 look at that. Um, but for those managers who are listening, they don't have experience um, in career coaching. Could you give us uh, perhaps a few more questions that they might use to kick off those coaching career conversations in your experience? Mm, 100%. And I think um, it's a really good point because, as I said earlier, I think it is about asking open questions and non-judgmental and listening and helping the person understand what is it for them? Because I find, you know, in my career coaching, and I, I focus a lot in, as a coach, you know, career coaching is my um my passion, my why, what I focus on. And most of the people I work with, or sorry, a lot of the people I work with are not clear what the goal is. What is their goal? Mm -hmm. What is their career space? What, what do they want out of the career? And sometimes they're not sure. So understand, helping someone understand what the goal is, I think can be really, really critical. Um, and asking things like, when did you feel most engaged at work? Mm -hmm. What Lovely does question. motivate and energise you? what do you think your needs are um, and really letting people think about what you know that's a big question what are your needs and mm -hmm. they might need to go away and think about it they may need to do some exercises you know and some reflection and some tools and really think about when were they most engaged at work what does bring them sense of satisfaction sense of purpose you know what is it that they're looking for from work is it a connection what does connection mean for, look like for them um yeah, what, what is their purpose? What, that, what do they um, get the most satisfaction from at work? When were they most engaged? There's lots of great open questions that you can ask. And then it's allowing the person to really think and reflect and dig into those big, big questions. Yeah, I love all of those questions. And what is also occurring to me um, as I'm listening as well is that I think and, and Veronica, tell me what you think about this, but I think sometimes managers think career conversations is simple as where do you want to be in three years' time mm -hmm. or what's your next job promotion? Mm -hmm. uh, 
But what you're talking about is those questions that we can ask today mm. to, 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 to have that career conversation today about the person's work, about their current career, mm. uh, not just where they want to be in three years' time. Mm. I think that's right. And I think um, that's what it has traditionally been. We've all had those, you know, mm. career conversations. <laughs> and it's what job do you want to do next? And how do you know, yeah. where are your weaknesses and how can we improve on those to get you there? And, and that's all mm. well and good. But, um, you know, it's also for some people digging deeper, what makes you happy at work? What could that look like? What can I do to support you with that? What else do you need to think through what your needs are and what, you know, in the future and at the moment. So I think there's some, um, yeah, a really good opportunity as the world of work is changing and there is more hybrid work to actually dig into what does connection look like for you? What does satisfaction look like for you? And and, and supporting people and coaching through people through that. Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, it's, it's conversations we can be having now. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of research that actually backs this up to say mm -hmm. that, uh, employ employees want their managers to be having these conversations mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and as we've mentioned not the not for your next job or the job after that or where do you want to be it's about my career here and now um, and how I'm adding value and making a difference and what's getting me out of bed in the in you know every day not just in the future and because I think a lot of jobs that are going to exist in the future may not even exist now you know, when oh, I was sure. yeah. getting career counselling at school, you know, there, I've been a diversity manager and head of diversity. There was no such thing as diversity manager. There was no yeah. such thing as someone who came and spoke on a podcast. There was no, there was no <laughs> YouTuber, like my daughter wants to be a YouTuber when she grows up. Um, yeah. there, you know, there was, there was no such thing as, you know, YouTuber and app developer. Those things didn't exist. So I think for us now, you know, as we help people navigate the, this changing world, it's not so much what job do you want? Because that job may not exist in the future or it may not exist, the job you want not, may not exist now. But if you understand your skills and needs and values, then as the world changes, you can evaluate that role and say, does that role meet my skills and needs and values and interests? So I think it absolutely is for now, but I think it also supports the future as well. Thank you. And that is just a lovely way of summarising it. I couldn't have summarised it better. So on that, with that summary, uh, Veronica, can I say on behalf of all the Open Door Coaching alumni, thank you so much uh, for coming back and sharing your insights with us. Uh, we always really appreciate it. Oh, I, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. And um, thank you to everyone on the chat. Some really great insights. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. And of course, we have our Leader as Coach program coming up. Uh, so you can if you're thinking about how do we ask these great questions, you can tap into the Leaders Coach Program. And of course, we have our Certificate for in Workplace and Business um, Coaching Program coming up as well. So we look forward to having everyone join us um, for those programs. So we'll say uh, goodbye for now and thank you for uh, joining us. We look forward to catching up with you at our next Coaching Cafe. And once again, um, our, our gratitude towards you, um, Veronica, for sharing your thoughts today. Thanks for having me.